The cult of death played a crucial role in ancient Egypt. With its necropolises, pyramids, mummies and sarcophaguses, three quarters of archaeological discoveries on Egyptian soil are directly linked to funeral rites. The ancient Egyptians loved life so much that they hoped to be able to enjoy it. Even after their death, they would mummify themselves to make their bodies last forever. Their burial places were built like dwellings, with the walls painted in colours associated with life. But that was not enough. The deceased also had to appear before Osiris, the god of the dead, who would judge their actions and decide whether or not to grant them eternal life. This age-old notion of judgment after death has not disappeared. In Egypt, both Christians and Muslims hope to be among the chosen few when the final judgment comes. Today, as in the past, death is not seen as an end for believers. the wedding season has begun. Couples marry in the shade of this ancient Egyptian temple. It is the start of summer, when temperatures rise to over 45 degrees centigrade. To protect themselves, people start work very early in the morning. This is the best time of day to spread the word. Trucks like these, with their makeshift loudspeakers, are often the only link between small, neighbouring rural communities. Caliph Mahmud, Caliph Hassanan has departed. May he rest in peace through the mercy of God. He is from the village of Najer Seke. His burial will take place at 3 o'clock before afternoon prayers. I am announcing the death of a Muslim to villagers. I am making this announcement so that everyone in the surrounding villages knows that this person has died. If I don't announce it through the loudspeakers, no one will come to his funeral because no one will have been informed. I have been doing this for 25 years, but it is not my real job. My real job is to do the call to prayer at the mosque. I was chosen because I have a good voice. Allahu Akbar is my job. It is very important for people to join the funeral procession and pray for the dead. If they do, they will be rewarded by God. But it is important for the deceased too. As we say here, if 40 people pray for the deceased, they will definitely go to heaven. Caliph Mahmud died in the night. In accordance with the Quranic tradition, he will be buried the following day. This man was held in high esteem. His friends gather outside his house to pay their last respects. <laughs> Inside, his family is watching over his corpse. In keeping with tradition, it has been wrapped in a white shroud. The adult males in the family have washed and embalmed the body. He is ready for his final journey to the village cemetery.
If Caliph Mahmud had lived in the age of the pharaohs, he would have been mummified after his death. Mummification was a much more complicated process than embalming. The ancient Egyptians believed that there was life after death in their own bodies. To see mummies today, you have to travel to the capital. Most of them are to be found in Cairo. Hidden away in the center of this sprawling city, this old museum is their home. The museum's incredible collection still attracts just as many Egyptomaniacs as ever, but the undisputed stars of the museum are the mummies. Some are over 3,000 years old and incredibly well preserved. The bandages have been removed to show off the bodies. That practice dates back to the early days of Egyptology in the 19th century. Nowadays, out of respect for their ancient religion, the mummies are left in their original state. At the museum's laboratory, not a day goes by without Professor Moerman, a distinguished specialist in the restoration of antiquities, handling the mummies. Once they are out of their sarcophagus, he never touches the cardboard casing. It is the final protection before the bandages. Here we have a mummy in a wooden case, shaped like a human body. Thanks to the funeral mask and the x-rays, we have been able to confirm that this is the mummy of a young woman. She was about 22 years old when she died. On the x-rays, we could also see that she had a fetus between her legs. So that tells us about the possible cause of death. Given her age, there is a strong possibility that she died of a miscarriage. The mummy is in perfect condition, as are the drawings on the case. Some are very rare. Here, for example, we have the god, Knum, standing in front of the young, dead girl. It is magnificent and very rare. The origins of mummification are due to chance. 6,000 years ago, Egyptians used to bury their dead in ditches in the desert. They noticed that the sand acted as a very good preservative. Later, their belief in eternal life forced them to find more effective processes to preserve the corpse in the best state possible. For the rich, balms, spices, and bitumen were used. Once the entrails had been removed, corpses were soaked for 70 days in natron, which is a natural salt which absorbs humidity. All of these products cost an absolute fortune. This is another very rare piece. It is the left arm of a pharaoh, King Unas, from the 5th dynasty. It was discovered by French archaeologist Gaston Maspero at the end of the 19th century. Later, researchers carbon dated the arm. The results confirmed that it came from the Old Kingdom from about 2350 BC. Daminations under the microscope revealed the presence of the resin and linen used during the mummification process. This is hard proof that mummification was already being practiced at that time. But the technique was not perfected until the days of the New Kingdom in the 18th and 19th.
We are working here on a very special mummy, a mummy with a portrait from the Roman era. These are called Fayum mummies, and they existed between the 1st and 5th centuries AD. This one is very special. It is drawn on a red background. There are only 20 like it in the world. The idea behind the funeral masks covering the faces of Egyptian mummies is that they restore the use of the senses to the dead person. At the end of the Old Kingdom, the masks were replaced with portraits that came straight out of the Greco-Roman artistic tradition. These portraits were commissioned from artists by the living in anticipation of certain death. It is hard to know exactly when mummification stopped, but there were no mummies between the 5th and 6th century AD. That date corresponds to the rise of monotheistic religions, which forbade this practice. In the region around Luxor, Caliph Mahmud's remains have reached their final resting place, the cemetery in his village. Only the men take part in the funeral procession. According to the Prophet Muhammad, the hyper-emotionalism of women and children would disturb the sobriety of the funeral. In the Muslim tradition, the burial must take place within 24 hours of death. This is a precaution which makes good sense at these latitudes. The corpse must be carried over a distance of four kilometers in temperatures of 45 degrees centigrade in the shade. There is only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet, chants the crowd, swelling as the procession reaches the corpse's final resting place. If the hills overlooking this tiny village cemetery could talk, they would tell us how little these rituals have changed. The Theban hills have seen thousands of funeral processions pass by since the days of the ancient Egyptians. With over 600 tombs recorded, you need a bit of help to find your way around. Sam and Michel is a tour guide. Whenever he comes to Luxor, he finds time to visit Amman's bookshop that specializes in Egyptology and is situated in the midst of the ancient ruins. I accompany groups and I guide them through Egypt. I try to pass my love of all things Egyptian onto them. You have to keep your knowledge up to date. There are new discoveries every year and new theories. This is my passion, so I try to stay up to date. To do that, I need books, and I need to read. Even for an avid reader, it would take several lifetimes to uncover all the secrets hidden in the Theban hills. To help make sense of it, Egyptologists have divided the necropolis into three parts. The Valley of the Nobles, the Valley of the Queens, and the Valley of the Kings. There are images of funeral processions on lots of graves. But Sama has decided to come to the Valley of the Nobles. With its monumental staircase, the tomb of Ramazé, a vizier under Amenhotep III and Akhenaton, is one of the largest in the area of the necropolis, reserved for nobles. 